Hello everybody, welcome to my first podcast, um, I guess, we're calling Your it... Your first podcast, man. We're, we're calling it Sari's Podcast. Uh, joining me <laughs> today is co-host Angry Pacifist. Say hello to the hello. beautiful people, Angry Pacifist. Hello to the beautiful people. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so one thing I want to talk about today is yeah. series 12 of, series 12 of the show what and, you... and, this, and this is the new series isn't it this yeah. isn't with tom baker no 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 no. the series after okay. series 11 starring that piece of okay. garbage which we don't speak of yeah you know feminists are gonna say that sexist um, yeah well <laughs> they shouldn't have made a terrible <laughs> character a woman like an object well they sh- well then they shouldn't have made the first woman doctor bad then should they well, technically, a man made the first woman Doctor Bad, so. Uh. <laughs> and it was approved by countless women who worked on the scripts. Yeah. Oh, I'm on fire today. Okay, uh, this might seem a little bit, whatever, but um, I hope you enjoy it regardless. Um, it's gonna be running until about eight thirty. So, oh wow, well, eight thirty hours time. So it's gonna be about an hour. Lovely. Yeah, hopefully. Um, hopefully, because I need to get that watch time up realistically, <laughs> and this is an effective way of me yep. doing that. Plus, I don't have to edit anything out. This is going to be my raw thoughts on things. Okay, but starting the first topic, series 12, what would you like to see added in to try and improve this current state of dreadful Doctor Who that we have. Obviously, don't go too outlandish. Like, don't say, I want a new Doctor, a new TARDIS. It's got to be within the realm. No, 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 no. It's got to be I, within... I understand, yeah. It's got to be within the realm of... It, it, it's got to fit in the Jodie Whittaker era of the show. It's got to make sense for what's happened in the past. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So, um, um, if you want to do yeah. that while I'm eating some rice pudding, that's it. Um, <laughs> okay. Um... So I feel that maybe we should drop one of the companions. Mm-hmm. Um, Graham is the easiest one to drop in terms of story, considering he has cancer and maybe he could go to hospital. But, but he's the like best one. He, I feel, yeah, I, I, I feel like he's the best companion out of them all. Mm. Um, Ryan could trip and fall over because he's dyspraxic. <laughs> I kind of feel that that's a bit. <laughs> Um, that's a bit mean to people who are dyspraxic. Um, yeah. so, yeah. For the for the listeners at home that don't know, I actually am disabled. So it's okay for us to make disabled jokes. But it's fine. Yeah. Well, I'm actually dyspraxic myself. Oh, um, I didn't know yeah, that. I, I think you might have told me before. I just forgot. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's definitely well, okay. Very happy. So it's definitely okay for us two muppets to make jokes about dyspraxia. Yeah. Because yeah. both um, of us have one. Uh, you must not um, be happy with the rest of the series, though, because they basically just ignore it for the rest of the series. Uh, um, Except in, like... I, 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 wish, I wish there was less in, uh, in Revolution, because there could be more in the rest of the series. Yeah. I guess, I guess if a writer doesn't know about mu- that much about it, then they can't really do it. I mean, the only instance uh, I can really remember, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the only instance I can really remember off the top of my head was the ladder in Ghost Monument. Yeah, that's the... as well as the opening to... Um, and he was like, I don't like ladders, yeah. they make me a bit afraid. Yeah. But the, the ladder thing was dumb, because one, he was going down, <laughs> which isn't really an issue, um, and two... I, from what I can tell, not a lot of people with dyspraxia have an issue with, with ladders. Um, so was that a bit I mean, poorly researched? You can be afraid of heights as well, as being dyspraxic, but I don't think yeah, huh. dyspraxia yeah. is particularly connected to being scared of ladders. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah. And then they've got that bit where he's all shooting up um, bots that seconds later, and the excuse is that he's played Call of Duty before. That seemed like a bit of a yeah, weak reason, but, like, but, for but me. It's dumb because, mate, I wouldn't be accepted into the army because uh, I wouldn't be able to, like, reload a gun quick, quick enough. And it's like, he's, he's trying to do all that. Mm. Um, and he does it, like, with expert it's, precision. It's just, like, it, it's just like, you clearly don't know what dyspraxia is. Um, mm. 
Well, I think they treated it well in the first episode when he's like struggling on the bike. That worked. Yeah, it really worked. Um, yeah, I, I really, I really like. But anyway, we're we'll getting off topic. Episode. I think they should personally get rid of Yasmin Khan. Like, yes. she contributes absolutely nothing whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. Just get rid of her while you can get rid of her. Yeah. You know. The thing is, is that apparently they're doing stuff with the with her being a police officer now. Well, that would make um, it better. That would give her a purpose for yeah, being but, there. But, I, yeah, but part of me feels late. it's a li- like a little bit too little, too late. You know, it's like yeah, you waited an entire crazy. series to do something with it. And knowing the show, it'll probably then, just be treated like, then, oh, you've landed, like, two days afterwards. Yeah, but then with Aratnix in the UK, that was set a few hours later, and, um, and she's not a police officer anymore, um, so that was really... Yeah, really that was bizarre, um, in Arachnids. I always find that strange. Yeah. When the guy's got two guns to them, and Yaz just doesn't go, you're under arrest. She's literally a police officer. Thing is, though, she's literally a police officer. Yeah. She's seen an armed man, which, bear in mind as well, guns are actually. A- guns are illegal in the UK to fire at people. They're not. <laughs> well, that's what he was threatening to do. You know, he was threatening to fire at her. Yeah. If he did, if he didn't tidy up her desk. It was like, well, yeah. I don't know, that whole bit was just a bit strange. Um, you know, we, we just keep getting off topic and talking about the... the but I guess that's the sort of, this. I guess that's sort of the point of a podcast, is you just sort of end up going on tangents yeah, and stuff. Kind of From the um, ones I've watched, that's what you do anyway. Yeah. If you, I'm sure, um, I'm sure the lovely Pro Series 11 commenters will give me a fun time in the description of this video anyway. Yeah, but, um, um, Oh, they're, they're fantastic. They never just resort to insults instead of presenting an argument. Uh, they never... They always, they, they always, um, like, they, they, they're so nice by, by always having, like, like, racist comments and then saying that we're racist. Um, or, or by saying that we're sexist and then saying that a female fan of the show doesn't know what she's talking about. Because that literally happened to me. For those of you who know her, Altiori, I was in a Twitter discussion with some random Pro Series 11 guy, and he was like, it might have been, or it might have been a different one, I can't really remember, but um, basically we were going back and forth, and I said, what about Altiori? She doesn't like Series 11, she's a female. And she's like, oh, well, Altiori hasn't seen any classic episodes, she doesn't know what she's talking about. And I'm like, so you're calling me sexist for not liking a female doctor when you have just told me that a female fan does not know what she's talking about because she hasn't watched the classic series. That's so dumb. For a lot of people, the classic series is actually quite hard, not only to yeah. access, but to watch, just in general. It's yeah. it's I quite hard. Very difficult to watch I think... Episodes. I think there's a YouTuber called Nit- Nitpicks. I'm sure most of you are probably familiar with the video he's made on uh, Series 11, which has got about, what is it, 400,000 views? So it's massive yeah, for Doctor yeah, Who videos. Yeah, the one he did on, on a couple of years ago. And he did a one on Chibnall a few years ago, yeah. yeah that's a lot more. But he was basically saying that, um, what was he saying? Oh my god. Um, he, he was saying, don't Yeah, I couldn't remember what he said, but he was like, um, I can't remember it. It'll come back to me later. But the point is, is that, my point is, is that you can't have one set of rules for one set of people and then go, well, it doesn't apply to us because we like the female talk. So that automatically exempts us from any rules that we might say. Um, and Altiori I've actually DM'd on Twitter, she's really nice. No, what are you saying? Yeah, 
What were you saying? I would like to go back to the good question I was supposed to Yes, answer. sorry. Again, uh, podcasts, tangents. Yeah. If you enjoy the tangents, let me know in the comments below. <laughs> but, um, but no, I'd, I'd probably get rid of one of her companions, most likely Yaz. Yeah, I'd say Yaz. Um, Unless they do something really cool with her in series 12, which I really yeah. doubt. I doubt yeah. that they're going to go, she's a fixed character now, everybody. <laughs> That could work, but then, but then there'd be complaints of, oh, it's too white. You got three, three white people. There's only one black person. How racist? No, 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 no. It, it, it's racist if you point it out. Like if, like, it's racist when you point that out. There was something else I saw on Twitter when um, Resolution came out. It was like, how long does it take for the gay character to get shot? It's like, who cares? Who would literally pause their television on the moment that that happens and go, I have to go link this. You're clearly not enjoying the show at that point, you're just looking for stuff to complain about. Yeah, I, I really do feel that if, you, that if you're saying, like, there aren't enough of these people, there aren't enough of that people, that's you being prejudiced right there against everyone else. It shouldn't matter, like, who, who the characters are, it shouldn't matter uh, who the actors playing them are. It should just be well-written characters that, um, that we enjoy watching mm. and nothing else. Um, especially in a, an escapist show like Doctor Who. Yeah. Um, it, may, it makes sense in, in, in some proper historical drama or something, but Doctor Who... I just... Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to move on. What else would you like to see changed for Series 12? But then, you wouldn't. I, no, I wouldn't. They need the some back. classic villains back because watching another series with Grasco and Tim Shaw yeah. is going to be dire otherwise. Yeah, I feel that they, they should do still one or two new villains. Like in every series, you always have new villains. But um, but I feel like they should have some. Villains that have been in New Who before, whether they originating in New Who or starting in Classic Who, I would not like to see the, the, the Daleks, the Cybermen, or the Master because they are too big to be. Really I feel like they're going to do the Cybermen. I feel like they're going to yeah. do the Cybermen. They're going to destroy the Cybermen. It's just hopefully just... not. Oh no, they're going to make the, the Cybermen out of Sheffield Steel. I can yeah, see it oh, now. Man. I mean, they, they'll probably set it in Sheffield. If they oh yeah. Cybermen. Sheffield seems to be their new favourite place at the moment. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Sheffield does seem to be their like favourite location to shoot at the moment. Yeah. Sheffield, guys! Oh, that makes so much sense. I'm not prejudiced to other people, but I'm going to shoot Doctor Who where I was born. Yeah, it, it, I mean, I, I mean, I guess Russell did it as well, and so did Moffat. But, but like, no, Cardiff was, no, Cardiff was used, Cardiff was used in the Moffat era as well. Yeah. And plus, all the locate, all the like things that the show needed was in Cardiff. So it wasn't just the fact that Jim, uh, that Russell T wanted it filmed in Cardiff. It was the fact that it was the most convenient place to actually yeah. film it at the time, and it still is. Really, it's got everything you need. Yeah. And, and, and Moffat always said London because they had the budget to do London. But I would, even though I'm a Londoner, I would have it set in Manchester or something. I'd just say, I'd just keep it in Cardiff. I know that sounds bad because I'm from Cardiff, but it's like, <laughs> it's, Cardiff has kind of become a synonymous location with the revival. There's a yeah, reason. And that's, and that's really cool. It, like, so many more people are coming to Cardiff now because of Doctor Who. Yeah. Ten years or so. And... Um, you know, there's a reason why the Doctor Who experience was here up until recently, which I might... We can talk about that in a bit if you want. I actually would like to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, um, oh, maybe another time. Yeah, uh, one villain that I would I would like to see maybe like a Weeping Angel. Weeping Angel. I, think, I know a lot of people don't want to see the Weeping Angel, and I completely understand why. But I feel that the Weeping Angels have been done so much now. That nah, by I I still think and, that there there's room. For... Yeah, but, 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 I, I, I just feel that 
fictional to make it worse, but I wouldn't care about it because they're already they've already been ruined. At the end of the day, we all ignore what happens in Chibnall series anyways. Yeah. So they and might. I person, yeah, and I, I, I personally feel that the Silents are a better villain. They have a similar concept. I think the Silents nah. are better. Nah. Nah. Um, no, um, it's because when you look at the Weeping Angels, you're, you're safe. But when you look at the Silents. That's the, that's just the only way you could beat them, but they could still kill you at that point. But and, that, and then that sense they're scary. The problem I have with the silence is that they're a lot more generic alien looking. Yeah, no, they, but, they definitely are. You know, the big but, the big sort of head, the, you know, the tentacly yeah, looking hands. But I, but they all I, look. I don't, I don't care that much about the design myself. I feel. A, a villain should just be more good concept. Yeah, but I think that the goes. concept mixed with the design of the Weeping Angel is what made it so creepy in the first place, because yeah. especially in a place like Britain, there's statues of and statuettes of people all over the place. Well, the thing with the Weeping Angels is that, um, is that the concept is tied into the design, because yeah. it's supposed to be um, like basically a parody of statues um, all over the UK. Yeah, and it um, works. But the silence are just a bit too I sort of. The, I feel that the silence are a much, a much creepier, like out, outside of the gimmick. Um, like the, the the weeping angels is like a gimmick because, like it it's like a statue and, mm. and, and and it's like statues don't move, but then these ones move when you don't look at them. They and haven't actually like, appeared the, since. The um... Don't have the same kind of gimmick, and I think we're, we're, I think outside of the gimmick, they are they are scarier. They haven't actually um, appeared be... since um, Time of the Doctor, since have they? Six. Time of the Doctor. Uh, so yeah, Time of the Doctor, but they weren't even a villain. Yeah, they were just in it briefly uh, with the... Yeah. Um, what's the church called? Uh, yeah. Um, the... I, mean, just, I, I, I don't know. It's not really a church anyway. Um, but they call it a church, don't they? It's the... Yeah, they call it a oh, I got it. The Church of the People mainframe, that's what it was. Yeah, the Church of the People mainframe. But they just call it a church because it's a Christmas special. Um, well, at least we had Christmas specials then. And it wasn't seen um, to be too much of a Christian thing. And just for the record, I'm not even Christian, but I'm, I'm just like, yeah. Christmas is just a British it, thing. It, it, it's such a well-known holiday that it just feels wrong. But I think, in a way, Doctor Who isn't on at Christmas. obviously, Christmas is about Christianity. It's sort of in the name. But yeah. I feel like the iconography of Christmas and what Christmas is about transcends just Christianity alone. Yeah, like, there's a reason... Because I'm like, I guess I'm an atheist and I don't really believe in anything. Um, but but I, we still celebrate it because it's more about having the family together and yeah, a season of giving. We, we, exactly, that's just what that's just what we yeah. take from it. We don't take the whole um, Jesus came born that day and King Herod yeah. decided to send a bunch of hit men to go and... Yeah. Well, we were... <laughs> Yeah, um, it's important. Yeah. It's important yeah. for people, I think. And, and, and for Chibnall to just say, no, we're not having a Christmas special, it, it just feels wrong. So that would be one of the other things that I would bring back. Yeah. <laughs> a Christmas and special. The solution could have been set on Christmas. Mm. Like, it was literally just that scene of the, the night. Well, we're not, we're not really doing anything on Christmas, so people just watch TV. Mm. So what happens if the Wi Fi turns off? Like, now, yeah. I understand that on Christmas you wouldn't be you'd be eating dinner, not watching TV. But but some people eat time. eat dinner while watching TV. Well, yeah. Even Christmas um, dinner. I don't personally with Christmas dinner, but yeah. I mean, I do but, with no, yeah. other meals, but like Christmas dinner isn't really one of those. Yeah. I mean, but um. A lot of people have it in a completely different. And plus, TV. once you've eaten, most of the like. Most of the people who are sort of over the age of 30 will just fall asleep. Yeah. So the kids and have I got to have something to do. And I feel a lot of the children will be playing with their new toys um, as well. So no one's really watching the TV anyway. You say that, but I think toys are becoming less and less of a prevalent thing now. Yeah, and I, and I personally feel that that's something... Like, every year I try um, and make um, games a bigger thing. I try and... Like, get everyone to play a board game rather than watch TV. Or go on, um, like, iPads or something. Yeah. But, like, 
but I do think that it's sad, but it's true. The I, the original idea of a toy is kind of becoming extinct now because they can all just do the things that they want on their iPads and phones and computers and whatever else. And don't get me wrong, I like I'm I'm a big fan of video games, but it doesn't mean that it should replace a toy for a child. I don't think. I think there should be a certain age in which you introduce a child to uh, technology. You shouldn't just plop an iPad in a four-year-old's hand and say, there you go. Yeah, I mean, with, with TV, I understand it, because children know stuff on like, CBBs or something. But, yeah. Um, but with, with, you don't just give a child a, a mobile phone or a tablet or give them a laptop or something. Like, you just... Like, yeah, that really should be introduced a bit later. Um, yeah, I would say that the ideal age is probably going to be... I would have said, like... Eight, maybe? Maybe nine? I don't know. Year three in Britain, which would be about... Six yeah. or seven? Oh, yeah, no, yeah. It would be seven. Seven, yeah. seven, I would say. Yeah, no, seven, seven, eight, seven, eight. Because, um, like, you know... At that point, probably their friends are going to want to know what their what their gamer tag is or what their username is and all the rest of it. So they're probably going to want to play with their friends. Yeah. But at like at yeah. like four and five, do you really care? No. You all just run around and talk about like. Yeah. Anyway, I feel like we're more at a parenting seminar than we are at. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's get back on topic. What else do you want to see in series twelve? Yep. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm not used to doing a podcast. Yep. Go. On. I feel like that we shouldn't have the main villains because Sibna's going to ruin them. I think Believing Angels is pretty good because they've already been ruined by Moffat, and I don't care anymore. The signage I don't want to see because Chibnall will ruin them for me. And what I about like great. the Santarans? Because they've already the been Sant- ruined by Moffat. The Santarans anyway. need like a, like on the one hand. Um, I'm because they're going to bring back a classic villain. I think we can pretty much guarantee that because it didn't go down well. I don't think. Then again, the New Year special did. Because they're kind of ridic- ridiculous anyway. Yeah, so. kind of ridiculous villains that no, that no one really cares for, but are kind of yeah. fun anyway. Um, uh, yeah. Maybe I wouldn't be surprised if they brought back an old companion, which I personally I don't, don't want. I don't want it to be River Song and I don't want it to be Rose. I feel like River Song's a pretty good shout. Saying is, Alex like Kingston recently. Yeah, but it's Chibnall, and he doesn't really care about the pre-established law, as we've found oh out. Gosh, so he would probably he would probably go. <laughs> Here's River Song, everybody. Uh, enjoy. Yeah. You know, he. I wouldn't be surprised. It's. But like Rose as well, I don't feel like she would work. Cause she had her per- she had her perfect M with the Matt Crisis Doctor. She got her own Doctor to uh, to. If anything, maybe a hologram in the TARDIS or something. Or yeah, maybe like as a hologram in the TARDIS or something. Because there's like that bit and there's a whole bit and let's kill Hitler where it's cycling through um, old companions and maybe they could come back that way. Because then that way it wouldn't mess with the pre-established law that Moffat has done. But it would also mean that Alex Kingston would be able to talk to the new Doctor without really talking to her. If that makes sense. Um, I think maybe Captain Jack would be quite good to come back. I've heard rumours about that and speculation. Hang on. 
it's true. But then again, there was speculation for that back before Series 11 came out. So you got to take speculation yeah. and rumours with a grain of salt. And I know that's rich coming from me, because seeing as I kind of made an entire video that's currently my most popular... We reliable source. Because yeah. We got that from another video. Another YouTuber. The, the source that he has has been, uh, has been reliable and has been right on multiple occasions. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if at least one of the things I said in those videos happen. I'm not saying it's a guarantee, but I'm saying that at least one of those things will happen. I think the move to a Saturday will probably happen. Yeah, I think it should be Friday. Because people are saying, oh, no, the ratings were great. Uh, Resolution had the lowest score for a New Year's special ever. Yeah. Well, not a New yeah. Year's special, a, like a festive special, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It had the lowest viewing figures for a festive special ever. You cannot tell me that that's good ratings, because it isn't. Yeah. We got like 5 million or something like that? It was... No, yeah, that's like Series 10 back. And according like, to Chibnall, like, 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 nothing goes on... The show would be cancelled because of the ratings in Series 10. And according to Chibnall, you know, New Year's Day is when everyone's drunk and everyone's hungover, so people are supposed to be bored. Bland entertainment, which is yeah, perfect way to describe Series Eleven. Um, yeah. I mean, if they, if they could at least do New Year's Eve and like at least some people talk about the morning waiting for midnight. Yeah. If they do need more family entertainment in the in the like at ten or eleven o'clock. What the build up to New Year's sort yeah, of party? Yeah. So they can't have adult shows at that point. Well, kids so, don't. I don't know, I don't think I ever stayed up till midnight until I was about 12, 13? I, I think I might have been 10. And so the thing is, is that they, like, I mean, they could play like, puppets slightly. But something I've it's noticed like, recently is that kids are going to bed later and later now than they they ever used to. Yeah. Like, it might just be me. But yeah. it's, like, I'll talk to some people about 9, 10, and they're like, I go to bed at 9 o'clock. I wouldn't have even known what 9 o'clock was. I, when, I I was... when, when I was like six years old, like the first bedtime I remember is six o'clock. Yeah, I well, I d- we came seven o'clock and I was watching The Simpsons at six. My parents were never that heartless, but they. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> but, um. No, but, uh, yeah. Because obviously, really we have a, a children's broadcaster that's obviously part of the BBC called CBBS, yeah. which is for little children. And that, um, at seven. and that finishes at 7, so when that used to finish and they used to play the um, oh, bedtime yeah, music. Bedtime uh, can you play that song? Wait, Wait let me see if I can get it one second. <laughs> I'm going to bring back the memories. I, I, think, I think they still use the same one. That we yeah, they do. We watched. Yeah. I'm going to find um, it and I'm going to play it for the yeah. wonderful viewers at home. <laughs> you can tell I'm uncomfortable doing this. <laughs> So I'm going to have to delete family. my search history it's after this because I don't want to have to be explaining why um, mm. why I'm looking up this, but okay. Can you hear it? Is it <laughs> yeah, they still use it. I don't know whether you can hear it or not. Yeah, I think they've changed it slightly. I think they've changed it slightly. But it's the same words. Yeah. But yeah, you were able to hear that, weren't you? Yeah, I was. So if the viewers at home couldn't hear it, we will now sing. No, we won't. We won't. We won't subject you. We won't subject you to our singing, but the basic lyrics are, and now it's time to say, no, to say sleep tight till the morning light. And it's, it's basically a way of telling kids, right, time for bed, kids. Yeah, and, and, it, and it's, it's like a younger... It was actually quite a good idea because it encouraged kids to go to yeah. bed. And, and, they, and they did story time just before that, so... Except my brother... Except... Like Except my brother, who despised that song because he knew whenever it stopped playing, he'd have to go to bed. <laughs> yeah. But I liked it. 
Um, <laughs> but then, but then after that, I would always have an, like another bedtime story afterwards from my dad. Nope. And then, and then he'd read me a, a bit of a bit from the Bible, and then he'd, oh no, <laughs> and, he, and he'd sing me a young Bible or something. That would definitely get you to sleep. Yeah. The Bible. What is wrong with you? Who goes, Daddy? Can we read the Bible? Are you like Are you like Ned Flanders' child? <laughs> they just read the Bible for fun. I think I need to go, but we, uh, can, we can do the second half of this. Yeah. Oh. Um, oh we'll just make, make oh, we can just make it a short podcast. Oh, we could just make it a short podcast. I don't know. Um, well, I didn't really answer the question, did I? But this was kind of a test run. Um, yeah, so in total, what that. would you like from series twelve quickly? Just maybe better writers, better directors. Bit yeah. Like Jamie Matheson and Toby Whithouse as writers. I yeah. Don't say. get too don't get too wishful. Yeah. Um, I, I don't I don't think they have been announced. So. Um, no. Um, um. Well, you have been listening uh, to the very first episode of the Tarius podcast. Leave your comments yeah. and. Thoughts in the thingy below. Uh, like the video. The comment section. The comment section. The comment section. <laughs> yes, that's the one. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Um, if you've got money to burn, then <laughs> join my Patreon. Yeah. Um, like, love, and mm-hmm. caress my channel. And... Keep on hating Chris Chignall and Jodie Whittaker, I guess. Have a wonderful day. And from where I am, good night.